a decade since the last time you yeah. guys got to play yeah. down here as well. Are you, are you excited first show tonight as well? Yeah, of course. We plan our steps wisely, so <laughs> it sometimes takes a decade. Um, we've never played Brisbane, so um, that's a quite exotic experience for us, I can tell you. <laughs> Brisbane's a lovely area as well in Australia. I'm very jealous. It's uh, always sunny, beautiful beaches, everything as well. So it's a, and it's a perfect time of year to come down and visit Brisbane. But you're also playing Perth for the first time as well. You're actually doing a full yeah. nation tour for the first time. That that's, true, yeah. that, that's exciting because a lot of bands who come down here, and I don't know if you ever check the comments when you announce a tour, but I think every comment says, add a Perth show because no one ever gets down to Perth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So extremely exciting for the fans to be able to. Yeah, uh, Get you yeah. guys out there. And it's it's kind of crazy. Yeah. You guys have been going around for more than four decades now. And to be able to still grow and come to a place like Australia and add more shows, two shows in Melbourne. Sydney's only got oh, two dozen tickets left. So that will be sold out before the weekend. It's uh, how, How's that feel just knowing that over time? Because some fans just dip in popularity. But to be able to go up in these foreign markets, it's just remarkable. Yeah. We're a young, ambitious band. What can <laughs> I tell you? <laughs> it's um, crazy how things work because um, it took us, I think, half the decades to come to Australia. Mm. I believe the first time we've come was in 2007. Yeah, I think that was That's right. 20 years ago, but uh, but still, that was in the middle of our career already. And um, we were able to really establish the market, which is uh, fantastic, but that tells you something about the Australian metal fan as well. It, it is kind of remarkable in a way the Australians have really kind of over the last 10 years, I'd say, uh, and I've noticed myself are embracing a bit more of the European metal bands that are out here, new ones coming along, old ones who've been around for a long time. It seems we've grown out of only listening to the American style, which is fantastic because heavy metal it's it's just so different, especially depending on the country it came from. Um, have you noticed that as well? Just your popularity is kind of reaching these new areas over the last couple of decades. For well, sure, um, it's a, like a movement and waves in, in some countries and other countries. It's it's very stable, and then you also recognize some of the countries they just come in very late to become very solid, like Australia, for instance. I mean, there are many reasons, and it's not worth to talk about it. Because, uh, uh, what's the reason for us not being, you know, able yeah. to play here before? Because that is pretty much uh, related to record history, record company bullshit, um, and that changed obviously when we um, signed our contract with Nuclear Blast. Um, yeah. But yeah, in in general, if you look at the whole world, it is really like some stable constantly growing markets and then there are some which are you know just getting in and others yeah. are like you know performing the the perfect way for always you know, i never know what to expect like sweden we've been really big in sweden in the beginning of the millennium yep. then we had a dip and we are growing there again i mean it's not like you look at it as you know an economical thing it's just like you feel like okay why do we have like half the people this time and you come by the next time and you have twice as much people and you don't have an explanation it's not even related to the album which sometimes you know the album with with a small amount of people are the most successful it's it's really not to explain it's it's just like a roller coaster you know you've got to have your ups and downs it just can't always <laughs> yeah, right. travel upwards. that's right and speaking of the album the new album as well very well received album fantastic album a, a lot Thank you. heavier than i was expecting um than some of the previous works. It, I don't know. Did the pandemic kind of affect the writing to have that kind of darker tone to it? No, it may have had an impact on the intensity at the very end. Um, but songwriting was mostly finished before the mm. pandemic. Um, lyrics is something else. They were certainly um, influenced because some of them were written during the pandemic. Um, but we had a vision. we had a vision and that vision was not to make the same mistakes we did with beyond the red mirror because the intensity of beyond the red mirror is on the same level but the album appears to be more complex and mm. more orchestral which we part partly did on intention because we were trying to maintain everything into the legacy of the darklands direction already um but we didn't do that 
for the favor of uh, Beyond the Red Mirror, even though Beyond the Red Mirror has been highly claimed, um, it could have been claimed even better if we went the same direction we did with uh, The God Machine. Yes. Musically, yeah, um, we changed another thing, and that was a, a decision to even go more for guideline performances. So whatever you know was presented by either of the musicians needed to be essential and needed to be self-explainable and as expressive as possible. And I think that was a good shot. I remember reading in an interview when the album was coming out as well that you mentioned that it was almost borderline coming to death metal to an extent. You guys almost had to pull back on how heavy it was. Is yeah, yeah, that was right. That was with um Architects of Doom, correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it's it's funny you say that because I guess Heaven Shall Burn doing the cover of Valhalla with yourself as well. Your music <laughs> does it can turn into that death metal very easily if you're not watching out for it. And just while I'm on that topic as well, because that cover came out years ago now, but you only recently filmed the music video for that. Um, well, it only recently got released, I think, August last year. How'd that come through, together? Yeah. Because that's that's very unusual for a band to record a music video years and years after a release of a song. Well, they were going for it. Yeah. Um, they just called me and asked if I were in for it again. And you know, I'm not. I'm very. The band is very close to Blind Guardian. Blind Guardian is very very close to Heaven and Heaven. Super nice people, uh, very funny people. <laughs> and yeah, the the manager just asked me. He said, "Well, it's it's going to be like two or three hours. It's always a bit more, but uh, they, they stick to that." And um, they, they came to my hometown and made it very easy for me. And of course, I didn't have the the most difficult spot. That also helped. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it was a fun thing. And obviously, I mean, the the impact the song had was good for the band as well. So it would have made no sense to not participate in this again. And, I, it, and it kind of goes, it's a bit of a legendary song to play at Vakken because I saw them close at Vakken with Valhalla. And yeah. of course, the um, the Bard song into Valhalla that you guys are just, it's, it's crazy. It's almost like you can hear that song echo through the ground through the holy lands when no one's playing it's just it's just unreal just reflecting on that i know it's a bit of a flashback now but how was it to get up there and perform those songs you didn't really need to sing you could have just held the microphone out to the crowd that whole time that was one of the most special performances i've ever seen in my life yeah i think it is something different in valhalla because it's so heavily equipped um so I will have to do the vocals there. Of course, I could skip the, the chorus as well, but um, that's different. In in the Bard song, everything comes together. You yeah. know, you have a very thin uh, arrangement in terms of instrumentation, and therefore the audience can shine, and they know the song by heart. I think maybe the song is a part of their heart, and mm. that makes it so impressive and so easy going for us. And uh, Sometimes when we really have a bad day and um, we all are aware it's a bad day, I, you know, we have the confidence of songs like Valhalla, Mirror, Mirror, or, or in particular the Bard song, then, you know, they could be perfect game changers. It's yeah. not that we have bad, bad days, but you know what I mean? You know, yeah. it's, uh, you, you feel, uh, we're not really in right now. It's, it's a bit slow from our side and, um, you want to push, but you can't get there by whatsoever reason. And then these songs come and it doesn't matter because people take over and they know, you know, they will have the fun. It's one of those things that can kind of help cure the jet lag after having to fly all the way yes. here. <laughs> For sure it does. Um, still, it's work, you know, um, whatever um, you can say and how, how grateful we are to be on stage. Um, getting on stage sick is always like, you know, you cannot avoid it, mm. but uh, it's it's a harm to your body. You know, like for instance, when someone has a bad cold, and it's usually a bit more than just a bad cold, and yeah, you don't skip a show. No, because yeah, at, the, at the end of the day, even though it is kind of a dream job for a lot of people, it is work at the end of the day. There's a, they're long days. The show part is fun, but I guess you're kind of you're working for everything leading up to the show, like these interviews, going to sound yeah, yeah, and easy. everything. Uh, it's it's a full time job. Yeah, and I'm grateful for our crew because they even have an, 
a harder job because they they prepare everything. They need to make sure no matter where we are playing, we are not recognizing how shitty the situation might be. And um, I'd say in 99.5 of all cases, they um, they do an amazing job when we just go on stage and we think business as usual. But yeah. it's barely ever the case. It's, it's never business as usual because something has gone wrong and people are all different and they they relate to chores and tasks different so their job is is quite demanding and you know them being relaxed when we go on stage that's that's an accomplishment and that makes our life far easier well they've definitely got a busy year ahead of them because you guys are playing some of the biggest shows in the world back at vac and again as well mm -hmm. what what's next for blind guardian after this tour cycle is done because that was a very long gap between the studio albums do you think there's going to be a shorter turnaround time this time or you just don't know yet i'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, i'm not sure how it will look like exactly we we did the re-recordings for somewhere far beyond for the anniversary album and um, we did the live recordings in 2022 so this is something certainly to come up very soon but we're talking about new material that is still on hold then because after that we do some acoustic playings which we also worked on because we had to kill some time and um then yeah after Wacken and after these shows we're going to play within this year we keep our focus on regular songwriting and i don't know i <laughs> i would be very surprised to find out that there's no new blind guardian album before 27 which yeah. is an accomplishment already um but i'm hoping for either 20 late 25 or 26. and how do you feel keeping like because your albums are still sounding fresh and people are loving the albums they're loving the songs live as well 12 albums in all the live albums the different things you've done how do you feel keeping it fresh after all these years because it's it's not easy they always said you've got your whole life to write your first album but to write 12 albums that's you know yeah that's that's something special but it, there's truth in there but you gain a bit of expertise over the years this mm. is helpful and then in addition it's it's a passion on one hand it's a profession on the other hand which makes it a bit easier and the excitement is still there i be believe maybe that's the, the essential point in blind guardian everyone is feeling completely relieved yeah. because you know we have accomplished so uh, so much but um everyone is also focused because as you said i mean we build a country like build up a market in in australia and we still see a development into the right direction so that's encouragement yeah motivation and we have plenty of that but um what i have to say is i don't see the moment where we are running out of ideas mm. you know they they might differ always and sometimes they appeal a bit more to people sometimes they won't but it's a wide range of things you can do and um we are making use of that no and, you, and you're doing fantastic as well and i am so happy you guys yeah. are back down here i i missed you last time you were in australia but I'm seeing you in Sydney, so I cannot wait. Ah, Mate, cool. <laughs> is there anything you wanted to say to the Australian fans before I let you go? Because you've uh, you've got to get on stage in a few hours. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, great for yeah, it's great to be here. It's great that you all support us, and um, we catch you on the road. It's a few hours, as you said, before we hit Brisbane for the first time. But there are more to come. And and you should not miss it. I think that is a very important message. <laughs> no, well, thank you so much for your time today. And, mate, you're going to kill it. Brisbane is one of the best crowds in all of Australia, so you're in for a treat. Oh. It's going to be a good opening night. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. We need it. <laughs> Take care. Take care. You have a great day.